Congratulations, you're listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. You did it! We are Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We have some fun conversation. Today's intro was 38 minutes long. Then we got into the fitness questions. Let me give you a rundown of the whole episode, right? So we open up by talking about Sony versus Xbox. A little bit of a debate going on between Adam and my, and my son. Ooh. Let's see who wins. Yeah. Then we talk about the app, the social media company, Parler. Uh, they are exploding right now after people are getting pissed off uh, at the perceived censorship mm. coming from places like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, by the way, we're all on Parler now. You can find all of us. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Then we talk about uh, mandatory vaccines. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. Ticketmaster said that they're going to require people to get vaccinated or tested in order to attend their events. So we have a little discussion about that. Then I mentioned the strange uh, hypocrisy or application of the laws in San Diego. Gyms mm. are closed, but stripper uh, stripper places are open. What are they called? Strip clubs? Yeah, Those keep are open. them open. Yeah. Um, then I talk about my wife looking amazing nine days after giving birth to my son. Good job, honey. Then we talk about the Air Force putting laser beams on their fighter jets. That gets Justin excited. We are living in a sci-fi. Then we talk about Disney. Uh, they're going to release their earnings tonight. We make some projections or predictions as to what we think they're going to show. Then uh, Adam talked about the whale that uh, happened at Avila Beach. Um, he thought they ate big fish. They don't. They eat uh, small fish. Yeah, little, little krill. <laughs> then we talked about Magic Spoon cereal. Magic Spoon makes zero sugar, low carb, uh, gluten-free, grain-free Super high protein cereal. It's got whey protein, ladies and gentlemen, and it tastes amazing. It's like blueberry flavor, fruity flavor. There's chocolate flavor. It's like the cereal you ate when you were a kid, except this is high in protein without any sugar. Okay. Now you can get a discount if you go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get a huge discount on your box of delicious high protein cereal. Yum. Then Justin talked about his wife making fun of him on FaceTime. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, honey. And then I talked about managing the temperature of the bed with the chili pad. This thing is amazing. Uh, you can actually make your bed cool or hot. It's water cooled. There is no EMFs in the pad that goes on your bed. It helps improve your deep sleep. Studies actually prove it. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a huge discount. Here's what you do. Go to chilitechnology.com. That's C-H-I-L-I technology.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code pump22. That's the word pump and the number 22 for a discount. Pump in your tutu. Then we got uh, to the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what's the deal is with power cleans. Are they worth it? Do they build muscle? What are they good for? The next question, this person has trouble sleeping more than seven hours uh, a night wants to know what we recommend for them. The third question, this person wants to know the difference between good fats and bad fats. And the final question, this person wants to know if we have any tips on how to manage uh, lifestyle, fitness, business, and being fathers. Where's the balance? That's right. Um, also, this month, our at-home workout programs are discounted heavily. I know a lot of places, gyms are closing down again. We have some of the most effective at-home workout programs you'll find anywhere on the internet. And what we're doing is we're offering three of them at super, super discounted prices. Okay, so the first program, MAPS Anywhere. All you need are resistance bands and a broomstick, and you can train your entire body. Then we have MAPS Suspension. This is an at-home workout program that uses only suspension trainers to train your entire body. Then we have MAPS Hit. This is a fat-burning program. 20-minute workouts that burn tremendous amounts of calories. If you follow all three programs, you get like five months or so of working out programming, okay? Excellent workout programming. Now, the retail price for all three programs combined would be $291, but here's what we're doing right now. Get all three with our holiday at-home bundle, the ultimate at-home bundle, for $99.99. That's it. Less than $100, and you get all three programs, one-time fee, full access. Remember, all the programs come with video demos and explanations and blueprints, everything you need to follow the programs. If you want to sign up, here's what you do. Go to mapsnovember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, november.com. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, 
shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, uh, yes, it is. A couple voice cracks yeah. there, too. Yeah, yeah. A few octaves up there. <laughs> we have two winners, one for Apple Podcasts and one for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winner is Avenga24. And for Facebook, we have Anthony Evans. Both of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Right out to you. Hey, how funny was that phone call yesterday, Adam? Oh, your son? <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Well, you hit me. I wasn't ready for that, right? So Sal calls me, right? And uh, he goes, hey, my son wants to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm like, so I guess I wait. Hold on. Let me set the table, all right? So... I sent a text message to uh, you know our group thread, and and I knew I didn't involve Doug because I know Doug doesn't give a shit about this. But I know that Justin has two two boys. I know you've got a teenage boy, and the new Xbox and the new PlayStation. <laughs> and, and you are a teenage boy. Yeah, and, I'm, <laughs> yeah. and I haven't grown up still. No. And so and I knew the new uh, Xbox and PlayStation are coming out, and I thought you know this would be cool to have this at the Truckee House. I don't play enough to where. I would justify spending five hundred dollars on my myself to use it. So I was really trying to rope you guys in on mm-hmm. splitting the cost with me and like, hey, I know your boys would like it. So I sent the message, and then you guys are all like, well, how much? And divide. It. You're like, yeah, cool, I'm in. So I'm like, awesome, I'm gonna get myself the Xbox that I want. And then I get a text message from Sal, like I think it was the next day. It said like, hey, my boy says Xbox sucks. We should do the PlayStation. I'm like, get the fuck out of yeah. here with that. Yeah. Yeah. So Adam sends me like this, this yeah, PlayStation. He, yeah. he sends me like this list uh, that shows the, the, the gigabytes and yeah. all that stuff. Oh uh, yeah. And Xbox beats PlayStation. So I showed my son again, and he's like, no, 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 no. no. So, <laughs> so that is inaccurate. Yeah, and he's like a total gamer, right? So yeah. we're driving. Uh, I was driving them to to my house yesterday, and uh, again, he's like, dude, gotta get PlayStation. Don't get the Xbox. I'm like, you gotta talk to Adam, dude. He's the he's the gamer of the group. So, so I so I called up Adam and they got the phone. And Adam's like, he got, Adam goes, look, I don't care what system we get, I'm gonna kick your ass no matter what we play. <laughs> and my son was just like, what? Yeah, I knew that was. Did kidding. you just challenge me? Yeah. yeah. He's like, but PlayStation's got more exclusive games. And Adam's like, what games? He's like, Spider Man. Adam starts cracking up over the phone. He's like, Nobody wants to play Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. So you're yeah. a bunch of fairy dust games you yeah. play, bro. That's yeah. what I told him. He's like, what, fairy dust. He goes, but they're the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get all defensive. Adam goes, we're going to get a lot of sports games. And then you can see my son's I wish you saw his face. Uh, sports games. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, dude, really? you're talking to my son. Yeah. Did you realize that we don't play sports or sports games? I know. I'm like, you like all the role play games. Final I don't fantasy. About, yeah. I don't give a shit about that. Dude, I was uh, dying so hard. Yeah, the shit talk that was going on in there. That's good, though. He's, you know what? I, now that we've we've hung out enough times, like I, you know, at first because he's so quiet, and like you said, he doesn't give a uh, give you a lot of read on like his emotions, right? So you can't read if he thinks no, something's dude. funny. You can't read if he's excited about it, if he's offended by something. But now that I know his personality. You know, he's a little witty smart ass, dude. He's definitely big time. Yeah, he's another one of us. He just we, comes off as an Android right. sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> so now I know I can go hard in the paint on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have to be all soft. Originally when we first meet, I'm like, oh, nice to him and shit. I'm like, no, no, no. Now yeah. I can punk him. No, but expect it to back yeah. now. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I totally expect it. I mean, he didn't back down. I mean, he was trying to call me out on it. Well, name the games. You know, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. hear, let's hear the games that you you're talking about. No, so, he's yeah. funny, dude. He's like his emotions run. Like I said before, it's like between a, a four and a six. That's it. Every now, day. were yeah. were you like that when you were that young? Do you remember? Um, I was a little bit more. Uh, I think I was a little more emotional. I definitely get excited, and I'm more vocal than he is. Yeah. So he's more anal- <laughs> He's like my analytical side uh, double, right? So he's like super analytical, very logical, uh, very dark sense of humor. I mean, sometimes he'll send me stuff, and I'm like. Did you send yeah. this to anyone else? <laughs> he's 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 all in the memes. Like he's got that down. Oh yeah. I'm like, yeah. don't send this to anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't do this anymore. But, but your father thinks this is hilarious. You'll be yeah. shadow banned. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. like me. But I laugh on the side. Yeah, but, you're like, I get it though. It's yeah. really good. Speaking of shadow banned, so I think I'm lifted, right? But it's a slow lift. So I'm not even nowhere close. To the type of views I was getting before, so you just gradually bring people's yeah, views back. To so you. I'm gonna start posting like the the, the saucy stuff on Parlor. Uh, so Parlor, you guys know Parlor, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. So you want to hear something crazy? I've yeah, seen I gotta it. Get on there. Just the last couple days, I've all of a sudden all of a sudden, I, I don't I haven't done anything. Right. I started the account. I haven't even done a post on there, but I opened the account right away when I heard about it. And for for some weird reason, in the last like 24 hours, I'm getting ads like crazy. I'm not doing anything. It's because getting... I've started posting, I think. Oh, yeah. So one? people found me and then they're finding Got it, got yeah, it. Yeah. So Parler in a week, right? In one week, went from four and a half million users to eight million. 
So nice. they almost doubled their users in one week following the election. Well, there needs to be competition, right? I mean, there's so much censorship happening right now. It's like you, you want to find another option that's out there. So it's <clears throat> nice to see at least something. Will yeah. it be? Will it be though, or is it going to be? You know, well, it, I, I, temporarily, right? Yeah. It's yeah. always like that when a startup company is like, "Oh, we're the best because we offer all these things," yeah. and, all this, and then they just completely conform. Yeah, yeah. fair and balanced. Yeah, Fox yeah. News. fair and balanced. <laughs> you know? But I mean, but because they're, they don't they don't really censor. Uh, that's what that's their thing, at least, right? It's. Mm -hmm. And open. Um, that's where I'm posting my, you know, where I'm going to go hard. You know, where I'm a little. I, I I hold back on Instagram because obviously we have a business to run, and you know I don't want to get shadow banned or blocked right, or right. kicked off. But on Parlor, I go a little harder. So if you want to see uh, the fun stuff, go over there <laughs> to check me out. Yeah. Over and there, you use the same handle, right? Are we we all forgot there. what I said. I think no. I think we all use the same handle. It's, yeah, it's still mine. Pump Sal over there. Right, right. Yeah, but you know, but they're blowing up, dude. They are totally exploding <laughs> because people are leaving. And you know what? This is what we predicted, right? We we talked about this before about private companies censoring and blocking, and you know, you get the calls for regulation. And what I've always said is, give it time, you'll see competition. Mm, yeah, people will get annoyed, it's and then you'll un-American. Yeah, you'll see other platforms will open up, and people will go to them who don't want to have you know that kind of censorship or whatever. Uh, did you guys know on Parler there's a meme making uh, feature? What? Uh -oh. Yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah. So memes are the. I will make this statement. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Memes are the most powerful form of communication today. There's yeah. nothing more powerful. Nothing sh gets shared faster, spreads faster than a meme. Nothing at all. And I think it's brilliant what they did. So there's a feature where you could post a picture, and then it gives you the option to post captions and wow. do stuff to make it look smart, like a meme. Smart. So mm -hmm. you can make your own meme. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is wild. Yeah. It's really good <clears> I have some drama for yeah, you guys. Huge for them. Oh, oh, I sweet. love drama. Yeah, well, I mean, or uh, confirming what I think people were saying was a conspiracy theory just like three months ago, right? So there's uh, this fear. Lizard people are running the government? No, not that. Oh, okay. Not those oh, ones. Man. No, no, no. No, I but there's, there's this fear that, <clears throat> they were going that they're going to make the vaccine mandatory. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and then there's there's the other side that's defending it, like that's ridiculous. Flu shots aren't mandatory, and people are saying they're not going to make it mandatory like that. The way they're going to make it mandatory is companies are going to start saying that in order for you to you know buy or use or come here, you're going to have to have this. And did you see what Ticket Ticketmaster? Yeah, came out Ticket to? Ticketmaster's doing that. Yeah, yeah, they're talking about making um, that in order for you to attend their concerts. Yeah. You have to have a vaccine. Now, here's the thing. I don't mind that. I really don't. Really. They're a private company. And not only that, but they're trying to ensure their success. That, that's the thing. They're trying to do anything they can to just promote like a big gathering of people. That's pretty. That's a pretty tough space to navigate. Yeah. How would you do that, right? Yeah. When you, how many people would want to show up now with COVID cases exploding? Right. But if you go and you know that everybody there has been vaccinated. You're far less likely to, you know, you're far more likely, I'd, I'd say, to show up. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but then there's that other side of it, like mandatory. You know, that that's a bit of, of a scary thought. Oh, if, if I, dude, if government makes it mandatory, I think that would be such a bad move. I don't think that would be smart at all. Yeah, because it's a, what a what a great way to to ensure that a segment of the population won't do it. By telling them they have to. Yeah. So do you think, though, that the real reason why Ticketmaster is doing something like this is that th that's going to be the only way that government will allow them to open up again? That's what I think. I, yeah. I think it's think the it's only like way they'll be able to even that's what I. It. That's what I think, too. And, and that's why I think it's a smart move, and I'm not against it. So I know I started this off with like this conspiracy thing like, you know, just to rile everybody up. But the truth is, like, I don't disagree with this. I think that if you're Ticketmaster and you've been like frozen, right? So you have a, uh, by the way, I have a buddy who, you know, my connection at uh, SAP, like mm -hmm. he's been there for 20 something years of his life, just recently got laid off. Oh man. You know, because no concerts, no right. sporting events, nothing's Nothing. going on. Yeah. So like, and he's like high, high up dude. Right. So it, it's crazy to think that, uh, they, they let him go. But so if you're Ticketmaster and you can't hold concerts and you can't do any of these, vin I mean, you're just, you're bleeding right now. And so, you know, you want to get go. You're, you're like, we have, even if, if COVID's spiking right now, we've got to find a way to get back in the game somehow. This is probably the only way that government will even. No, yeah, I don't like that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not down with. See, that's again, that's government coming in and saying you can't provide for yourself unless you do this. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily like that. Mm. I, but I do see that I, I think Ticketmaster would do it anyway. I really do. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think they would do it anyway because think about it. If you were the CEO I, of Ticketmaster. I, see, I disagree. And the reason why I disagree is because. Uh, you're going the the people because there's there's a portion of people okay that listen to whatever concert whoever the person is that's singing 
that is an, is going to be an anti-vaxxer, and then there's going to be people that are pro it. So you're already cutting your audience in half, or at least a mm. quarter. So as a business owner, you would never want to do that unless you had to do that. Well, if you so if you read if you look at the current polls, so these are the polls that are happening right now. Um, the Gallup polls show that seventy something percent of Americans will voluntarily get a vaccine mm. uh, when it's available. So majority of Americans will do it voluntarily. Now making it mandatory, um, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing. I don't know what that would look like. But I think more more people would get the vaccine than not. Mm -hmm. So I think Ticketmaster would probably do better by saying you have to have a vaccine. Well, what if you bring proof that you got tested morning of, like let's say that's on there. Okay. So, so that counts too. Yeah. So that's good. That's another option. Like mm -hmm. somebody could come in and like they get tested, they come there and then they do like the temperature and all that, like on site. So yeah. it's like a, just another wall of protection. So I, I, that's what I read. Did you read that? So they, yeah, I saw that too. So it's not just uh, it's a vaccine plus that. No, it's vaccine or that. Oh, or, or, that. or that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You, that's what I'm saying. You that's either need to have been tested that morning with proof that you are COVID free. Or you have to have the vaccine. Ooh, those testing companies. I wonder oh, if there's a public dude. one. I wonder oh, yeah. if there's a public option. Well, they're already there's uh, at home and stuff, right? So you have companies that are doing all the at home the at home ones, right? Yeah. Well, I wonder if those are valid, or you have to go to a certain one. Yeah, because if there's that's the, that's okay. the certified there's, there's ones. Your, there's your uh, uh, you know, conspiracy stuff like that. Watch the government get involved. Ticketmaster in that. owns the testing. No, no. Watch <laughs> well, somebody. Yeah, what mean, government have their hands in one of the one of the, one of the ones? It has to be these three. One of these three. Like conveniently, they Who, have their hands. in Whoever it. gets that certification vacation is going to crush. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. how many people are going to go get those, those Well, tests? especially if they make it mandatory, it has to go through one. Oh, man. See, but here's the thing that makes me so mad. It's, okay, I first off, I am I believe that in a free society, people should be able to make their own risky choices and pay the consequences of those choices. And on top of that, that means if you knowingly infect someone, then you should also be uh, liable, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. That's why I don't like lockdowns anyway. But that's not what really pisses me off. What really pisses me off is the hypocrisy and inconsistencies in what they decide they allow it to be open and not. It makes it makes you feel like things are going crazy. Right. In San Diego, this is what's just just happened right now in San Diego. Gyms are closed. You cannot go work out in the gym. Strip clubs indoors are open. Yeah. I don't understand Such churches hypocrisy. Churches closed. You can't have indoor uh, you know, uh, churches. You can't have you can't worship indoors. But you could go to a strip club. Yeah. I don't understand the 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 logic. It's illogical. It makes my that's what makes my brain go crazy. It's yeah. like, what do you mean? You saw the you know, the mass celebration here makes sense. Yeah, mass celebrations, you know, Biden projected winner. It's like huge crowds of people celebrating. Nobody says damn thing. Yeah. You know, but other things are closed. That's the kind of stuff that makes people want to lose their lose their mind. Yeah, yeah, but that's mostly here, though, right? Is that that's not everywhere in the country, right? That's us that we're dealing with in California. Is that well, cool? I don't know. Like, well, even New York, weren't they like well, trying to pass okay. legislation? Well, again, New York and California. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very similar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, there's some craziness going How on. How the hell did the strip clubs stay open? That's what I want to know. It's amazing. I, I don't know. They had some good lawyers. And a, how are the strippers going to stay in shape without the gyms? Yeah. 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 Oh, or or, that's or the strippers might be friendly with the politicians. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. That's probably, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, so what do you do with your? We gotta, we gotta keep cinnamon in business. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but she's 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 one of my favorites. So so what do you do with your gym then? If you want to keep it open, just let people work out naked. No no no, we're a we're strip a strip club now. Yeah, we're a strip. It's a fetish strip club. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. We like we like our strippers to do squats and oh, people yeah. watch. You just do group classes. You know, everybody does <laughs> yeah. like lap dances. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of uh, of nice looking bodies, dude, my wife's bouncing back quick. Oh, nice transition. Yeah. She looks really really good already. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, this morning she you know. We, we were, you know, hanging out or whatever, and uh, I'm looking at her. I mean, we're what? what how many days? What, my son was born on the third. What's today? Twelve. So I mean, he's like nine days old. Yeah. So it's only been nine days she, she, since she had the baby, and it just her. And, and I, you know, this is what happens when you lift weights yeah. and you you have muscle and you're strong and healthy going into a pregnancy and then through the pregnancy. I've seen this with clients well, as well. Yeah, and especially C-section, epidural. There's like a few days added to that of recovery. So that's that's amazing. It she's is. bouncing back. But totally. I mean, everything she's you can see that she went into it and during the process was fit and maintaining her health, yeah. eating properly and it's just she's just her body's coming back. She's feeling really good. The so. real work is done all before. Yeah. It's yep. the same thing that I used to tell the competitors, people that were, were wanting to get into competing. It's like, it's not the prep. You know, it's not the once you're 12 weeks away from getting on stage. It's all the work that you do leading up to that that's going to make sure that you're successful. I feel like the same things for pregnancy. If you 
did a good job of, of building a strong physique heading into the pregnancy, you get away with some of those days off and those the morning sickness that you have to deal with or losing a little bit of muscle because you built so much heading into it. Mm-hmm. It makes such a huge difference. Yeah, my daughter, you know, she's she's turning 11 um, soon, but she's young enough to where she's blunt, you know, still. So she's not quite at the age yet where you figure, so you know what she says is true. So she said the same thing. She comes over and she looks at Jessica and she's like, wow, you look really good already. Jessica's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. You know that feels good as a mom, yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah, it does. It no, does, dude. Absolutely. I used to pay little kids to say that to my wife every now and then. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> that that would have been smart. <laughs> you know? hey, that would have been a life hack. Hey, can you walk up to that lady yeah, and tell her? Just tell her, man, you, your body's gorgeous. Tell her she looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good idea. Dude, Justin, for you, I got. I read an article I think you would like. I think it's pretty cool. Really? It's about S- aliens? No. Oh. N- not. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I'm not interested. That's your favorite. Yeah. So the Air Force by 2025 is going to have uh, fighter jets with lasers on them. Yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> dude, that's not exciting. real, is it? Yes, it is. Like like lasers? Like real lasers? Yes, dude. I'll pull up the article that they're right going to like like incinerate things with? Yeah, so so they're going to Okay, uh, <laughs> the air this is this oh, was this a popular exciting. popular mechanics. Yeah. The Air Force is putting death rays on fighter jets. Oh my god. That's what it says. So they're working with Lockheed Martin to deploy lasers on fighter jets by 2025. So it's called the Shield program. It's going to allow, allow fighter jets to shoot down. That's what the, to shoot down missiles. Whoa. That's what the lasers are going to be. So if missiles are shot at them, right. The late you know, lasers are extremely accurate. Well, I've seen honestly, like, and this is my nerddom, but I have seen videos of of lasers that have already taken out missiles, you know, from the ground, and so they're attaching these now to fighter jets, huh? That's crazy. Yeah. So and, can and someone, one of you two, please, one of you nerds, explain how these lasers work? Like, it's like I think of a laser, and I think of a light laser beam that I shoot around with a cat to chase around and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. How would that stop well, a missile? Super concentrated. Yeah. yeah. I, what, where is how is it different? I have no idea. And are these and does it, like if the laser were to hit a human, would it like cut them in half like a like a <laughs> like a lightsaber? Like what's I mean, it? It depends on how intense it is, and, right? And does it make this sound? Pew pew. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's uh, it, it'll 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 burn you. Like if it hits you, you'll catch fire. I don't think it cuts through you. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen the videos of them shooting like targets. Yeah. Oh, you just, have. Yeah. I've just, never seen a laser video before. You haven't? No. Oh, You've, dude. Yeah, I'm missing, missing out. out. I am missing out. And yeah. rail guns. Oh, those are my favorite. Oh, that's to watch a whole other. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing, dude. Rail guns. Wow. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, what is bro. that? These these are they fire uh, projectiles that they don't use gunpowder. They use electromagnets. Yes. But they fire the projectiles. So there's no friction. You know, so just, fast and so hard. Like, for example, there was this one uh, theoretical uh, weapon where they could literally put it on a satellite mm-hmm. and it would fire tungsten steel rods, right, down to earth. No gunpowder, no, no, it doesn't need any, any type of fuel, but it would, it would hit the earth with such velocity and power that it would be, it would be like equivalent to a nuke. Like a meteor, like yeah. hidden, yeah. <laughs> Out of how, does, how does it generate that much uh, speed? I don't because understand. when some oh, um, because electromagnets and they 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 propel they it so propel quickly. It. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's it's one like called a Tesla rocket. Yeah, there's one called Metal Rain where it'll shoot. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, like a thousand rounds in a second. Yeah. And it'll rain out and just take out whatever target. Yeah, they shoot front. these projectiles and they go through like multiple buildings. Yeah, you know, it's just. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, here's a here's a laser video right here. Yeah, uh, so yes. <laughs> yeah. That that one's actually on a ship now. Is, yeah. is this one right here? Looks like a big telescope. I wish I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, I thought these were like. I, wish a, I could explain. Don't they have, a little don't they bit have a thing? Whoa! What? Wait, boom! No, those are those are the, those are bullets. Okay. That's the that was the laser. Look, just what? just catches fire. The hell, isn't that crazy? Yeah. What? Yeah, it's gonna get weird soon. Yeah. Don't don't they have things too where they, they can send like sound like from hella far away and it just be like deafening? Like that's what they have on those ships. Yeah. Don't they do they have that too? Well, they they have those actually as crowd control yeah. already. You know, with the police and like military, uh, like national guard kind of stuff, where they put them on these like Humvees. And it, it, it can direct the sound specifically to like a group of people. Yeah. And so like, and then it gets really, really intense to where it's like, it's ear piercing and it just makes you like, you know, fall to the ground. There's a sound weapon that they'll, uh, they'll project at people and it doesn't hurt your ears, but it's at a frequency that it shakes your, it shakes your inside so much that you shit yourself. 
<laughs> no way. Yes. The brown. What? It's the brown sound. Is that what it is? No, I just I figured. Oh, that <laughs> sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the brown note. Hey, that'll Ooh. stop a protest. Oh, yeah. 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 Why We're not it? leaving. Yeah. Oh shit! I gotta go. <laughs> oh, here's the long range acoustic. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is what, what it is. looks like. Yeah, yeah. They, don't they have these on like ships? Is that where they where you see? I I think so. Maybe on some of the Coast Guard ships. Yeah. No, the one that makes you shit yourself. I think that one's the best. I would love to see them use that on a crowd. Yeah. That would make me. Uh, this is where I've watched so many videos, but I, I wish I could like remember all the specifics. You know, you just start talking about this shit. And, like, I'm, like there's real people behind these. Like, what are they talking about? Yeah, yeah. there's <laughs> That's no, not how it works. There's no brown sound. There's <laughs> no brown sound. It doesn't do that. What the hell's going oh, on? Oh, knowing yeah. our podcast, somebody will. Yeah, One of us whatever. will get a DM and get checked for sure. Uh, we rarely yeah. ever get away with anything yeah. like that for sure. Anyway, so hey, uh, some stock market news. Uh, I know we bring that up every once in a while. Disney is going to be reporting earnings. As of the recording of this podcast tonight, okay. so what are your what do you guys think? Up, you think it's gonna be up? Yeah, I do. well, yeah, because they just dropped Mandalorian, so mm -hmm. I feel like that was a big move. And right stuff, which I keep trying to tell you guys to watch. So it, that's going to be a, a, a massive hit, also. If it mm -hmm. hasn't already, I remember, in fact, actually looked that up, Doug. Is it already uh, turned into a massive? Look at right stuff, Disney. Uh, you know how it's doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but what about the parks? Is that such a small percentage of their revenue? Yeah, well, they've had the Orlando parks been open with real minimal visits, yeah. but but uh, like probably like twenty, maybe less than twenty I mean, percent capacity. I would think that the parks are are obviously massive. Cash they're, they're cows, huge, but yeah. I also would think that they have massive overhead. Too. Right, like are they massively profitable? Right, exactly. So I would, I would. I'm, they are. They made, it made them like. I remember seeing this. This is probably way off, but it was like at least like a million a day, something like that. In profit, yeah. Oh, okay. Because well, I, I mean, because nothing is more profitable than the streaming stuff. I mean, the once they they put that out. Yeah, I mean, but is Disney Plus really a big profitable thing? Yet? Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah there, it broke records when Mandalorian got dropped. Yeah, but well, see, they, movies are not out yet. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors that might hurt Disney. Mm. You know, but you think they're going to be up? Huh? I do. I say they're going to go. I think they're going to come under expectations. You do? Yeah, that's what I think. Mm, it'll be interesting to see. I don't yeah. know. They, they I, Doug, are you looking that up right now? I am. I'm seeing that. The reviews aren't great. Oh, really? Yep. I loved it. That's funny. Yeah. Well, mm. no. I mean, you know, I know you make fun of my recommendations. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Watch Ride Stuff. I promise you, it's good. It really I'll, is. I'll, I'll I actually, it, and I actually, and I actually think that you guys will really like it. It's based on a true story. How could you not like that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, not every true story is great. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a true story. No, that is yeah. true. That yeah. is true. Was, Dude, did <laughs> you guys see? So down, we, we've we spent time down past Robles. We spent time down in San Luis Obispo. There's that beach, Avila Beach. Yeah. So I guess it's a big beach for like whale watching and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's these people out there on, in these kayaks. And all of a sudden, the, one of these whales comes up to, to feed. That was Avila Beach that happened at? Yes. I saw the video. I didn't know that was Avila Beach. Literally, with his mouth open, like basically took one like somebody in one of those kayaks in its mouth and then the person just you know barely like swam out of its mouth as it kind of plunged back oh down into the water god that's terrifying like basically jonah you know in the whale like i did not know that like. was avila beach that was here it was crazy dude can what? you imagine you're just like hey i'm kayaking it's a great sunny day ah! out of nowhere yeah yeah it just came right out from under him. you know what's what suck about that is it's not like a shark where it bites you and then you're dead no. Just whale, swallow you, whole. you just get swallowed. No, I don't think you you wouldn't you wouldn't get down because of the it's got the what's it called the, the uvula the no. baleen. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing terms out there. Yeah. It wouldn't get down. What do you mean? It's got a baleen. Is that what it's called? What's the thing called oh, that like filters? The, yeah, it's like the the, the brush of teeth. Yeah, has. I don't think you'd make it, but you'd probably drown. Wait, 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 wait a second. Yeah. Like, explain this to me. So you it, they got to swallow fish the size of humans? No, they don't. They don't. <laughs> oh, whales, dude. Oh, Doug has it on here. Whales don't eat. Look at this. Oh my god, dude! That's terrifying. How fucking scary! That's terrifying. No, wait, 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 wait. You don't think whales eat fish the size of humans, like tuna that are like? Do you, do you know what whales eat? Huh? Do you know what whales eat? They don't eat other fish. They do, but do you know what kind of fish they eat? I don't. Yeah. It's it krill. Yeah, that's it. Plankton, that's it. Yeah. Plankton. They don't krill? eat any big fish at all. No. no. Oh, I didn't. I mean, know they'll they... probably make their way in there, but you know, like swallowing them. Yeah. No, dude. Whales no, eat millions and millions of tiny, tiny little fish, and so, what they yeah. do is they swallow water and filter it through. So I knew they ate little fish like too, but they, they don't eat big fish too. I didn't no, know that. No. At all. Nothing. No, they just eat all day. And is it big. because of what you're you're talking about? Yeah. Like pull up a whale's uh, mouth. Wow. <laughs> 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 so much education happening today. Yeah. No. Whales. 
These are all topics. I mean, where do you guys get the information on this? You're actually like a whale watching. I don't know. For- we paid attention in elementary school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was my problem. All the problem. field trips. I'm sorry. Uh, I feel bad now for making you feel bad. I, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, know, whales are. Um, I don't. Re- and I don't remember what grade that was. I mean, if you told me what grade it was, <laughs> to say, I think uh, it was like fourth grade. Is yeah, it fourth see, grade? See that? See that white thing uh, that filters out the filters the water. Yeah. It's called a baleen. I was right. Oh, Ooh. all right. Very wow. cool. Wow. Random fact. Yeah. There it is. Good job. Yeah. So they don't eat. Now, isn't that a big ass otter going down in his mouth? That's an accident. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sure it happens. You know, like they swallow things by accident. That's, but that's not what they're going for. No, that's okay. An wait, 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 wait. My point isn't that's what they. Lo- I know they don't love humans. You know what I'm saying? But they can swallow something that size. Technically, but they won't. They'll probably spit it out. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they spit it Back out. Back me up, Doug. Come on, I need help over they here. Shit them out. I don't know. Yeah. It could happen. <laughs> Happened to Jonah. Yeah, <laughs> he lived in there. For it a was while. written in there for it was. Hey, speaking of speaking of biting, and Pinocchio. Speaking of biting stuff, so this is funny. Oh, that's so true. Uh, yesterday, I'm uh, I'm I'm getting out uh, my my magic spoon cereal, right? So I get in our our cupboard and I open up the magic the the or get the box out. <laughs> open up the magic box. You know, yeah, sorry. I grab the, I grab the box. Oh. I'm not kicking okay, this, this big around, so the audience can't see. But it's like a size of a silver dollar is chewed out of the corners of the box. And I, I look at Katrina and I go, do we have a, we have a rat in yeah. the house? Is there like this a is... possum in here? And she goes, no, that was Max. So Max is <laughs> Max is going through this thing right now because he's teething and he's got like four coming in right now and his molars are. And oh, so wow. he just chews the shit out of anything. And I'm like- It must have freaked you out. Like oh, some huge rat It looks like a massive house. rat got a hold of my magic spoon and I thought, and I was ate, ate all the corners of the side of the box <laughs> off. Damn. I'm like, what are you, you gave him the cardboard box like that? She goes, I didn't see, it was stacked because we had a, you know- <laughs> So with, he's, a, he's got paper in his stomach right now? Oh yeah, dude. Kid's <laughs> eating anything right now. <laughs> That's, That's just, hilarious. Yeah. I like this kid. Oh, I mean, I totally thought it was a rat. It looked like it was just the way it was all chewed up and destroyed. And then the fact that it was in the cupboard, like it was you know, closed away. I had no idea. That's but funny, I guess man. when it came in, so like we get obviously shipments of it on a pretty regular basis. So it was the boxes were in his where he could walk around. So the guy can yeah. get a hold of anything. But which was, flavor was it? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, yeah, it was fruity. So he's a yeah, yeah. But he didn't get to the even get to the uh, cereal. It was oh yeah, just the cardboard. He he was chewing. It must that's a great f- way to recycle. You don't have to throw the box away. Cannot be good for his gut. No, no, Some no. that I mean, so, he uh, you know I he is definitely and you remember you brought up the whole sugar thing. Yeah, I, I like I'm on this kick right now of trying to get to the bottom of. I wonder if his teething is extra bad for him because we haven't given him any sugar. And oh, if, if he I had sugar saying. every once in a while, would it help numb yeah, that? Sugar. I don't know if that works on kids that old. I think I know it's mm. a newborn thing, but I don't know if it works on kids that old. I have mm. no idea. I don't know why it would be different if you've never been introduced to it, right? You've never been introduced to. Well, any it doesn't sugar. work on. Um, oh, yeah, I, I hear that. what you're you, saying. Yeah, if you haven't, if, if he, how different is he really than your son? If he's not really been introduced to any sugar, I would think that his body would still respond similarly, right? Until you get introduced to it. Hmm, mm. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Just that, that when you brought that up, teething can be really nasty for some kids. Yeah, it's it'll give own... some kids fevers. It'll give some kids diarrhea. My yeah. son would get a fever. Sometimes. Yeah, he had the fever when he mm. when he first started. The first ones were breaking through. He was getting that. It's the only thing that makes the kid crabby. I mean, he is such a good. He's kid. He's a very chill kid. Oh, he's so chill. Yeah, he's so good... so chill. And so if he's at all irritable. It's like a you know ninety five percent chance it's because a new tooth yeah. is coming in and that's what we know. I overwhelmed him yesterday the other day. So Katrina was out here working out and he was there with her cute. He had his little beanie on and everything, his little jacket. Oh yeah. And you guys know me. I have to like I want to squeeze the shit. Yeah. Out of little cute. Did he kids. run away from you? Yeah. So I like oh. go and I I very careful not to be too loud or be too aggressive, but I didn't hold back enough. So I'm like ah, you know a little bit and I see his face. He's like ah oh. Yeah. Like, oh shit he's coming for me. I scared him. Dude. <laughs> he grabs onto Katrina's leg. He's like hide. I ruined it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to win him over, you know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. He's definitely delicate. at that phase still, where he's very. I mean, it's also this the clinginess to us, right? Like, I think it where the the age that they're at, they, they've really started to piece together who mommy, who daddy is. Stranger danger. Yeah, yeah. They, it's it's there was a major transition from like eight ninth eight eight nine months. You could go any stranger could grab him, pick him up, and play with him, and he would be fine. Like he mm-hmm. didn't. But once they start putting, I think becoming aware of who mommy and daddy are yeah. and other yeah. people, like then all of a sudden they get extra clingy. Mm-hmm. So. Dude, hey, through that. So we we roast each other all the time on the podcast, and like I, you know, I love it. I, you guys are actually like really great at it, you know, in terms of like making fun and <laughs> you know pointing things out. Did and we whatnot. hear your feelings or something? No, okay. uh, Courtney's way better. 
Okay, so th- like, so I was I was FaceTiming her because she's still like uh, with the kids in in Palm Desert right now, and so I was just like FaceTiming her or whatever, and she's like, like mid conversation just stops, and she's like, wait a minute, and, and it's like, look at, are you, do you have a blister? Is that a herp forming on your face? And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, what, what are you talking about? She screen captures it, like like puts a red circle around it, sends it back to me, and like shows me it like on there, and I'm like, dude, like. <laughs> Who does that? That's, that's you know, me. Like, yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, ouch. I was gonna say, I don't know if that's better than us, dude. I think yeah. I feel that's like just ours. Mean. Yeah, I feel like ours are like little softballs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they're not like that. But that's like we, we go hard on each other though all the time. Like that was uh, like the insult I did to Katrina that did not land. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That was not funny you at all. You can't do that. Stay. You cannot be as hard to your wife as she is it to you. Or, or is Courtney cool with that? Can you no, like hammer her? Yeah. Um, well, it depends. Yeah, I can't. I, I, yeah, I think it's it's pretty much off balance. You yeah. know, like I'll, I could take it a little bit more you know but that was one of those i was laughing and because it, it was just like so random you know that she's it, it, you know she, like you're gonna point something out that's like really a thing with me no like, i wouldn't oh. no jessica would cry i couldn't yeah. I, i've got a random funny story for you so katrina's best friend she has a uh, uh she has a, a daughter and a son and the son is like i want to say he's six five or six somewhere real smart boy and Katrina and her are always talking about, you know, she's obviously ahead of Katrina and they're best friends. So they're always talking about anytime Katrina has something going on with the kid, she's reaches out to her and she gives her advice mm-hmm. and stuff. And one of the things that she always talks about now that, you know, Max is becoming more aware and starting to get words and stuff like that is like, you know, avoid the baby talk and talk, talk to him like he's an adult that'll mm-hmm. help progress him. And, you know, don't, don't shy away. If they ask you a direct question, like be honest about it. Don't just because it might be hard. And you've talked about this before, yeah. like the sex talk. If they ask questions, be very straightforward. Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, her best friend and her husband were were talking on the phone the other day, and they were all concerned about their aunt because she just got out of surgery, but she just had uh, 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 breast implants. Mm. So she and so they were like, oh yeah, you know, she's healing. And then the the, the five year old hears that you know Auntie so and so is in surgery, and she's, well, what's wrong with Auntie? And so she's all of a sudden she's like, oh shit, okay, uh, what do I say right here? Do I how do I explain this to my son? Oh well, she she had surgery, and you know, she, oh is she okay? And what happened to her? Yeah, all concerned. Right, and so she's like trying to dodge as best she can by being yeah, honest. Yeah, because that's a weird one. Right, it is a weird one. Because <laughs> yeah, then you're gonna be like, well, why would they well, do that? Exactly. Do that? So she's like, uh, he had, uh, she had breast augmentation. Yeah. And so then, of course, the follow up when you're that age is like, what is that? Yeah. Okay, well, that's when you decide to uh, have bigger boobs. And then he's, why would she do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, a typical five-year-old. So they, they go down this rabbit hole of like why? explaining like exactly what it is. And he's, you know, obviously a little confused why someone would do that. Well, fast forward like a week later, they're at, they're at like a birthday party or something. And the ants there, you know, boob, the breast implant thing happened like a couple weeks before or whatever. And he sees her and he walks over to his mom and dad like, they don't look any bigger, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right in front, right in front of the, right in front of the mom and stuff like that. She said she'd like turned like beet red, like so embarrassed. <laughs> She's like, you know, it's one of those things where you tell people like be as honest as you possibly can to the kid, but then you're like, what do you do in a situation like that, and how do you explain like why humans want to do that? You know, you know, yeah. that's exactly what would you say yeah. with that? I, you, I would Daddy just say, loves this idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> hey, so what do you? So on. So Courtney and the kids are gone. Yeah. For a while then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're kind of setting up, uh, you know, down there and, and, and doing kind of remote learning. Cause that's the thing about remote learning. It's like at this point they can do it from wherever. So yeah. they're just like, whatever, we're just going to kind of make the most of this. And like my, her sister lives down there. And so they're all kind of, so what have you been doing? Hanging out. So Dude, what have you been doing at home? Just like trying to entertain the dogs and like, you know, catch up on work stuff. And, and, uh, I took my parents out to dinner last night and, yeah, it's just been uh, batching it. You what know? are you eating? Oh, dude, I'm I'm literally going out and I'm eating places for burgers and steak. You know, and and that's about it. Zero. Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> that's my go-to. It's meat, like, meat, yeah. and meat and Mexican. Meat and Mexican. If I could just live uh, as a meaty Mexican, you know, uh, connoisseur. I'm, I'm now. <laughs> when Cor- when Courtney's in town, do you guys? Is it like you guys have dinner? Um, sit down, have dinner every night, yeah. or what? Okay. So yeah, our dinners are yeah, and and we'll. And I'll contribute with barbecuing and whatnot, but like for the most part, she does like mm. most of the cooking. Oh, so. hey, I wanted to ask you guys. So, uh, so Jessica, when she was pregnant, wanted AC on all the time. Did that? So her body got really hot, right? Yeah. Before she got pregnant, she liked the house warm. 
Yeah. Does it change back? Or because I've heard from people that I've heard from a couple women, they said it never went back. I always now. Oh, uh-huh. it, it so it, it changed back for Katrina. So she, does it, it but take it, a while? It did take a while because okay. right even after when she was still, I think it was when she was breastfeeding. Because right, breastfeeding kicks up your metabolism too. Yes, right? yes. Uh, you I burn a lot of calories. A lot of calories. So I think just her her metabolism roaring more like that is what also kept her t- her core temperature up. Okay. So while she was, I felt like while she was breastfeeding, uh, I was able to get away with keeping the house. Much cooler for much longer. Uh, yeah, because right now, I mean, the the chili pad is saving things because we can't keep the house freezing anymore because the baby likes warm, mm. does not like it to be cool. Yeah. So that she's cranking up the chili pad to cool down, and she's like, "When do you think I'm going to stay like this? Like I'm just hot all the time." And I'm like, "I don't know. It might last a Changed little." Changed her whole climate. It'll yeah. be interesting to what you guys do because we have so we, not only do we have the chili pad on our on our mattress, we've also got a a heater, a portable heater in his room, and then I run the AC. So we've got oh, all man. these climate. But I mean, I feel like with all that, like I've got it right. So she can't complain about how cold the house is because we can manage his right. And your Nanit thing has a temperature on there, right? Yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. know that already, right? So we can look at like she like she and. This is something that she swears by that, you know, between 68 and 72, he sleeps. It goes one degree lower, one degree wakes higher, up. wakes up. It's, wow. it's, it's an awful, awful temperature for him. So, like, she's always wanting to manage it right between that, which makes it really hard for me trying to manage the rest of the house, keeping it cool enough for me to sleep. So Yeah, I wonder about that in terms of exposure of, like, certain climates. Because when I was in Chicago, like, it, that's really after that I turned into, like, I, I got acclimated to cold and I really couldn't sleep if it was hot anymore. You know, like, I was, I, I did much better when I kind of... And was here first. I remember that happened to me, and uh, I lived in Palm Desert for a while, and it obviously gets super hot down there. Yeah. you know, 120 degrees in the summer, and then I'd come up to San Jose to visit my parents. It'd be 90, 89, and everybody like, oh my god, Get, it's like, so hot. On. Like it's not that hot, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. So I, I, I do think that happens. Yeah. All right. First question is from Eli J. Hall. Are power cleans worth a try? What do they benefit? Oh, power clean. You know, uh, power exercises in general are really good at uh, helping you build muscle and performance. The problem with power exercises is the there's a higher uh, skill level. So you yeah. need to be really, really good with your technique, and you don't want to go uh, to fatigue or train super heavy until you're perfect mm-hmm. at the form. At one point, I put hang cleans in my routine on a regular basis, and my goal was to get good at them. The side effects I got from the hang cleans were a more developed uh, upper back and traps that I didn't get from the traditional back exercise. So that's what I noticed personally from them. Yeah, I think there's. I mean, it's kind of tough to get triple extension and to, to get your body to coordinate like uh, is required for a, a power clean. And I think that it's it, there's definitely a lot of value to it because there's not a lot of ways to apply speed in barbell training. And so that, that's one of those moves. It's like a definitive, like, I'm I'm working specifically on uh, you know power uh, with with a specific move, and so I know a lot of coaches too in the sports world uh, go back and forth whether or not it's valuable in the programming for their athletes because there's like such a high uh, education that needs to uh, happen in in a in a period of learning the, the actual skill of it because there's so many little nuances to it. So I know a lot of them will use like med balls or, or they'll do slam balls or they'll do uh, you know more like box jump. And, and different ways to get uh, this triple extension and this fast twitch uh, explosive uh, type of movement instead with, with less risk involved. So I, I think it really depends <clears throat> on your goal, right? So I, I, I think there's better ways to build muscle. I think there's better um, exercises for maybe specific performance attributes that you're looking for. But that being said, I also think that because it's a complex movement and it has so much benefit and carry over to strength, power, building muscle, it's an awesome idea. And this to me, like <clears throat> when I think of someone who asks a question like this, uh, and if I'm like training you, right? So if you're a client of mine and maybe you've been lifting for five, 10 years, long time, and you're asking a question like, like uh, you want to get into power cleans, I think this is a great idea. I love, I think that at least for me personally, half of what's kept me going for for decades as far as training 
is setting new goals. Like who cares if it doesn't build the most muscle for you or who cares if it's maybe not the best performance exercise. If you're interested in it, it's complex and you like working towards getting good at something. Mm -hmm. It's a great movement for that reason because of triple extension. Like you're talking about, you're going to build your legs, you're going to build your upper back, your shoulders, your traps. I mean, it's got a lot of carryover. It's an, it's a great movement. It's a high skill movement though, and you will need to work towards it. But this is also, I think, what's fun. I remember when Justin first introduced like the windmill to me. And uh, I remember for like the next six months, like all I wanted to do was like train that. I wanted to get good at it. And I had lots of carryover. I got lots of benefits for getting good at that. And and to me, when you've kind of, you know, done the whole build a bunch of muscle, get hella shredded, you've you've you know, you know trained for sports, like to keep it interesting and fun, you know, and this become to be make it something that's a lifelong pursuit. I think it's an awesome goal to do things like this, to say, hey, I'm going to get good at power cleans and start to program it. Now, if you have very specific goals that, hey, I want to build a certain amount of muscle or I want to burn body fat, I, I think there's faster, better ways to get there than trying a really high skill movement in your routine. Yeah, you, you want to treat this uh, like the high skill movement that it is. And what I mean by that is practice, 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 practice. Don't use lots of weight. Don't use much weight at all. In fact, the ways to learn power cleans is you, you typically will start with a broomstick. Mm -hmm. You'll start with no weight at all, and then you progress to just the bar, and then you use just the bar for a long time, and then you add 10 pounds. And it's all about technique here. So you got to treat it as such. It is not like a curl. It is not like a leg press. It's mm -hmm. not like any other type of exercise. Power movements require lots and lots of skills. So if you decide you want to do it, uh, treat them um, as such. But I will say this, you get good at power cleans, which will take you a while, but you mm -hmm. get good at them. Your athleticism will go up more than with other exercises. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I I, honest, I love them. And, uh, and I took a long time to, you know, figure out the move and feel like I was proficient enough to, to pull it off. Um, I, I like it too as a, as a goal to set. You know, if, if, if something, if you've gone through and you've really ironed out a lot of uh, deviations and, you know, you've, you've been applying a lot of uh, good mobility practices, your movement is really on point, you can stabilize on command, uh, you know, you're moving good weight, uh, you're strong enough. Like, this is like the next sort of progression. Like, it is a good goal to, to be able to do something like this that takes a lot of skill, but it also demonstrates, uh, you know, how much work that you put in leading up to that next question is from Britt cox rich i struggle to sleep more than seven hours a night which part of sleep is best for recovery and is it possible to increase just that part such as deep sleep if so how good question yeah so yeah the deep sleep part supposedly is most uh, important for recovery but honestly all of them are equally important because you don't necessarily just jump into one stage without going through the other stages, can you make seven hours of sleep better than nine hours of sleep? Sure you can. Yeah, it depends, right? If, yeah, no, you can You can accelerate getting into REM. Well, you can, but what my point is that you need to have quality sleep. So seven hours of good sleep is better than nine hours of shitty sleep. Of course. Yeah. And the ways you do that are the same ways you do you know, what we talked about before. But isn't what, what constitutes you know nine hours of bad sleep much of the time is people uh, failing to get into REM right? yeah. and taking a long time to get there at all or being interrupted while you're in REM, yes, right? Isn't yes. that normally, normally what, what constitutes bad sleep is the interruption of that deep REM sleep or how long it takes you to get into that REM sleep. Yeah. And the, the ways you can help that are, you know, you have a sleep routine, turn off your electronics a couple hours before you go to bed, limit your caffeine intake. Definitely don't have ca caffeine after maybe 2 PM or 4 PM for people who are not super sensitive would be the latest. Um, I would say, um, sleep in a very cool room. Those are things that can help. You can also try using cannabinoids. Some people find that cannabinoids make a big difference. I know CBD has been shown um, in some studies to increase the recovery aspect of sleep for some people. So you could do like, a, like we work with a company called Ned. They make a sleep blend. That might help you out. But you really got to take your sleep seriously. You can't just... You know, you know, you're on your computer watching TV and they're like, all right, time to go to bed and just, you know, expect yourself to get in to good sleep. Well, random that. So I didn't know that, um, one, I didn't know you picked this question and see it ahead of time. Two, I didn't know that we had uh, Chili as a commercial today. But I actually, when I was on the phone with Chili negotiating our 2021 contract, one of the things that we were talking about that's been great, because I always like to, you know, how's the company been doing and what, all, the, all their side stuff. And one of the things that they said that's been great this year 
is because of all these tools like Aura Rings and Fitbits and everything that monitor sleep. Oh, people can measure. Yes. There's been a lot of people that have been tracking their quality of sleep improvement when they actually start using this tool. Hmm. So, you know, here's- Based on how many times they kind of wake up or like wrestle with their sleep. Yeah, and then how quick they get into REM. Like you can see all that like with Aura Rings. I Because you fidget a lot more, right? When you're not- uh, yeah. in rem so and that and that's to to me that's the thing that uh and that it's hard right so like you use tools like you know blue blockers to get you in sleep or you use things like ned sleep or use chili pad and people are like it's so hard to like am i is it working is it being better for me i get up the same time like they they a lot of times we think that it's it's all about you know am i sleeping eight hours nine hours or longer but it's not it's about how quick do you fall asleep get into that rem sweet sleep and then how little is it interrupted through the night mm-hmm. that normally is what makes constitutes really good sleep and tools like this this is what they help whether they're tools to help you get ready like your routine like salicing or that keep you at a temperature throughout the night those things are valuable and that's where if you're somebody who is trying to get better sleep you know if it's if you get great sleep and you're then these things may be a waste of money for you but if you're somebody who is trying to improve sleep or you get up a lot through the night or you toss and turn a lot this is where i see a lot of value in things like this yeah the mm-hmm. biggest issue for a lot of people without realizing is caffeine it really is and, yeah. and, and they don't uh, people don't want to face this because Caffeine is because it works. It's well, it's it's enjoyable. It's addicting, and if you have bad sleep, you need it the next day. Right, it's a ritual. And caffeine consumption has only increased uh, in in recent years. And it's funny. I'll work with clients, and I'll tell them to reduce their caffeine intake. And there's a lot of him and hum and ha and we go back and forth. Finally, they'll reduce it or eliminate it, and they'll all come back and be like, "Oh my god, best sleep ever!" And so I didn't really think caffeine made that big of a difference. It makes a huge difference. You know, if you're having bad sleep and you have caffeine, even if it's one coffee, cut it and then watch what happens. Um, Here's something interesting with the chili pad, uh, Adam. There's a feature, I've talked about this before, I don't know if you guys have done this yet, where you can have it increase the temperature of your bed to help wake you up in the morning so you don't need an Mm -hmm. alarm clock. Have you guys tried this yet? Yeah, I felt like I needed to pee right away. <laughs> Did you, what? Like, the, the warm? Yeah, it got yeah, it got me up. Yeah, yeah. It, so it I set mine so that it warms the bed up to get me to wake up or to naturally wake up, and I wake up like uh, refreshed rather yeah. than being like jolted alar- uh, awake by. Alarm. Yeah, I doubled that with also that alarm clock that like is like the yes. rising sun yep. at the same time. Same it was here. like the combo of both. I still was, don't have that. I gotta get that. Oh yeah, but I mean. It, Rarely do I combine them at the same time, but when it was, it was, it was really effective. The other thing is don't have kids. That's the other thing that'll help you out. Oh, yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Good advice. Next question is from Jor L. A. Morales. Can you guys break down the whole back and forth of good fats versus bad fats, saturated versus unsaturated fats, I thought a macro is a macro. No, a macro is not a macro. Um, there are fats are different, just like there's different sugars and Proteins even have different amino acid profiles. So good and bad fats, really it's about the balance uh, of fats that you have um, in your body. Uh, Heavily processed oils tend to be worse for you. So these are oils that require a lot of processing to produce. So like uh, grapeseed oil, uh, for example, canola oil. These types of fats are are quite unstable, require a lot of processing um, in order to produce. Natural fats are present uh, just as they are. For example, olive oil. You take an olive and you squeeze it between your fingers, you produce oil. Very minimal. There's no very minimal processing to produce that. Um, mm-hmm. The fats in animal fats. I know they get a lot of they get a bad rap, but if you're otherwise healthy, animal fats are are perfectly fine. Omega three fatty acids in fish are a, a, mm. a, a, a you know an animal. Is there fat. any value though to trans fats? Because I've heard nothing but negative. No, trans fats are pretty. Yeah, yeah they're pretty much bad. They, they're very minimal amounts occur in nature, um, and a lot of people in the past, at least, we were consuming them in the form of uh, hydrogenated oils that were right. You know, placed in in, in you know. Products that were t- t- that showed no saturated fat, but the way that they accomplished they inject that, that in to make it taste better is, 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 is yeah, injecting. That I in. really thought the uh, the clip that we shared that Rachel shared on Instagram of Max really sums yeah Max this. talked about this. yeah I thought this summed it up really well when he addressed this. We asked a, a similar question to him, and you know there is there's a, there's a camp of you know uh, law of thermodynamics calories in versus calories out, and the truth is like. That just doesn't help the average consumer with behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, that's the science, right? If you, if, I mean, if you are somebody and you're, you burn 2,000 calories a day, your body does naturally, right? At rest, right? So some of us, 
uh, have a metabolism where it'll burn 2,000 calories even if you laid in bed. Because you, your body has to utilize energy to operate and to live. Uh, everybody's is, and it, it ranges in numbers like that from 1,000 up to three, 4,000, depending on how big you are. You could lay in bed and burn 2,000 calories. So by, by that science, that means I could technically eat 1,500 calories of mint chip ice cream every day and still lose weight. The truth is there's there's nothing healthy about that strategy, uh, both not for what's my going on in my insides, but also long-term and behaviors. And so and I think that we try and speak to that a lot of time. It's like, yeah, if if the calories are all the same, if it's in the goal is all we care about is losing w- losing weight, then yeah, then a lot of these things uh, do equate to some to something similar, right? When it comes to just mm-hmm. losing weight. But as far as how your body utilizes that and what it does for you behavior wise, I mean, that's the things that nobody's ta- or nobody likes to talk about. Yeah. And, you know, the whole good fat, bad fat in the past, it was all about which one raised or lowered cholesterol. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, canola oil and margarine, you know, sunflower yeah. oil and margarine, you know, they lowered cholesterol and they did. They did lower cholesterol, but they definitely did not make people um, healthier. In fact, there was a, a, there was a study done years ago where they lowered people's cholesterol by replacing their saturated fats with these processed fats, these vegetable oils, and everybody's cholesterol did get lower, but their mortality increased. Mm -hmm. Um, Saturated fats get a bad rap, but the reality is it's a very small percentage of the population that has bad uh, effects from having a lot of saturated fat. A lot of us, if our diets are otherwise healthy, Saturated fats don't have well, that. It's usually because it's a combo, right? It's yeah. usually coming from a processed source, and so you know. or that, or you're having it with tons of carbohydrates, yeah, right? sugar, in, in a calorie surplus. Yeah, and, and, and there's a, a burger. There, there's a bit of a bias there because we've been sold sold so hard that saturated fats are bad that if you took a a survey of people who ate a lot of saturated fat, it's typically people who don't necessarily care about their health, which means there's other things involved. But like using me as an example, I eat a ton of saturated fat. I mean, I eat red meat every single day. I eat eight to 10 eggs a day. Uh, I know that's more about cholesterol, but still it's supposedly unhealthy. Um, I eat lots and lots of saturated fats. My cholesterol levels are borderline too low. In fact, my totals, you know, I have a good ratio, but my totals are are pretty low. So, but there is a small percentage of people that if they eat a lot of saturated fat, they do get cholesterol numbers and lipid numbers that don't, that aren't so good. Next question is from Prof Arbor. How do you manage your fitness lifestyle, business, and being a father? I know you all make it seem seamless, but I struggle with maintaining my fitness, work, and being a father. Well, I'm like super pumped this person thinks we do it seamlessly. Yeah, I know, right? It sure doesn't feel that way for us sometimes. No, I I think uh, structure helps a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So like if I I work out every morning at 6 a.m., that's how I maintain my workouts. If I don't do them at 6 a.m., then uh, they become very, very inconsistent because the day throws things at me. I get tired or whatever. Yep. So that's how I maintain fitness. Uh, business, you know, we come in here, we do the stuff that we need to do, and then we hire people and outsource the stuff that we don't necessarily need to do. I think this is extremely valuable in business, um, uh, especially as you start to grow, because if you get stuck in that you're doing everything yourself uh, mentality, you actually limit. Uh, the amount of growth that you can have. Um, and then as far as family is concerned, I mean, I prioritize things like dinner with everybody. I make sure sometimes I'm tired and I want to sit on the couch and not do anything, but I have my kids with me and I, you know, I make the choice to do, to hang out with them instead or play a board game. You know, it takes a lot of structure. It takes a lot of balance. It's just, you got to put your, you have to kind of prioritize some of that balance. It's really the, the, that's the big thing. Yeah. I mean, structure is something I've had to learn over the years uh, just to be able to get any of it to be consistent, you know? And so that's, that was one of those, it's, it's hard for me to think of that direction because I just want to go ahead and do what I want to do at the moment. And then, you know, have that always in the back of my mind, like I'm going to accomplish this and I'll get to it uh, after I get through all these things, but to, to really be able to um, make sure it's a priority, I have to be able to have that space, you know, there for that, but it, it's a weird balance still having that flexibility. So it, it looks different. So it's not like, you know, what I had in my mind of, okay, here's my, here's my time allotted for fitness. You know, it's an hour and then I'm going to do this very, like very specific program. And it's going to look like this workout. Uh, it always changes. Like, so I go in there based on how my body feels, I'm changing it all the time. And maybe it's less, maybe it's more. Um, but, uh, I'm trying to adjust all the time with what I can do and then whether I could incorporate my kids or my wife into, you know, the fitness. And, and so that way I, I'm getting family time and, you know, it's just, I'm shuffling constantly, but I'm, I'm trying to at least, you know, provide some time frames of where that's going to occur. 
So um, a little bit different than you guys. Uh, I think uh, empathy and honesty uh, with yourself is important here. So uh, the empathy part, I think, here's the deal. Fitness, work, and being a father, um, it, something's going to give, right? If you are crushing work and you're a workaholic and you, you work 12, 18 hours a day every single day uh, of, and seven days a week, uh, fitness and fatherhood is probably going to give a little bit. Um, if you're, uh, you don't work at all and you're a stay-at-home dad, uh, then work suffers a little bit, and, but yet you're an awesome father. And then if you're a fin fitness fanatic and you train seven days a week and never take it off, well, you're probably in super great shape, but maybe you're a little bit more of an absent father and just kind of half-ass at work. So I think being uh, empathetic to you and then also knowing which of those are, the, are, the, are your highest priority. So for me right now, and, and that could change, by the way, where you're at in your life. Like uh, for me right now, that's that's kind of shifted and changed. Like uh, being a father is by far the most important thing to me right now. And with that comes empathy with the way I am physique-wise sometimes. Like uh, somebody who has prided himself on keeping myself in, you know, premium shape all the time and competing at the highest level. Like, you know, I have very high standards for what fitness looks like for me. Uh, and so I've had to, to wrestle with that a bit of like, you know, like, am I, am, I may not be as fit as where I'd like to be or where I was before. Um, but I also am, uh, I'm being the father that I want to be. And so that's the empathetic part. Then there's the, the honest part too, because then there's the other side of, of me or m many people, which is justifies why I'm not working out or justifies why I'm not being a present as a father. So, you know, I, those two things, I think I'm, I'm, I'm always checking in with myself. Like, Am I being honest with myself when I say I couldn't make it to the gym this week? Or was I being lazy? Or did I not make it a, a priority to get there? Because I know that if I train two to three hours in a week, I can maintain a pretty good physique. You know, it's not competitive physique, but it's a pretty damn good physique, two to three hours. Yet there are weeks when I don't make two to three hours in the week. So was it because I was working so hard and I was being such a great father or was I being lazy and I didn't prioritize? So being honest with you, and sometimes it's going to look like that. Sometimes it absolutely was, you know what? There was a lot of family stuff that happened this week. There was a ton of work things that got thrown on my plate. So I did. I prioritized work and family and fitness took a back seat and I only made an hour this week. And so I, I didn't do well. That's okay. Be, be empathetic to yourself and be understanding, but also be honest. Be honest and be able to look at yourself and say, you know, am I just making excuses why I'm not spending time in this one department? Mm -hmm. And if you need structure in order to do that, then I agree with that. But I also think that fitness, work, and fatherhood are are three big, massive rocks. Oh, yeah. It's always changing. Yeah, that that take a lot of a lot of effort, right? I mean, and probably fitness the least, right? Fitness really only takes about three hours a week. But I do recognize being a father and 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 a, and a business owner. That sometimes, like fatherhood and business, is like everything for me. That week, it could be crazy. It could. There's already been weeks where work has been absolutely crazy, stressful, lots of stuff on our plate. In addition to that, I am not sacrificing father. I'm not sacrificing my time with my son when I get home for an hour. That's I've made that like that's my mm -hmm. commitment. I'm not. And so you know what. Fitness got put on the back burner that week. Eh, so what? If it's just one week, that's not gonna. It's not gonna t take me from somebody who is in premium shape to awful shape in one week's time. And that's where the honesty part. Comes yeah, in. and I think too, you know, when when you do things like start a business or have a a child, you have to make peace with the fact that it's not gonna be like it was before. I think this is where a lot of guys will struggle. You know, where a lot of guys will say, "Oh, you know, I used to just." Work out when I want in the afternoon. That's my favorite time to work out. That's what I like to do. Well, okay, it's not going to happen anymore like that. You got to make peace with that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I used to, you know, my wife and I are, you know, we used to just go out to dinner and, and enjoy ourselves. And, and, you know, now that we have kids, you know, we, well, yeah, this is different now. It's just the way it, I used to be able to sit down and watch movies and stuff, but now I got to clean up the house and stuff. And that's what I do now. Well, yeah, this is your life is different. Though all of those are, are important responsibilities. And so life is just going to be different now. That might mean that you have less time to surf the internet or watch TV or do other things because now you're you're handling other responsibilities. And here's why it's important to make peace with that because if you don't, you're going to hate it while you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't, you're going to be cleaning the house and hating it or you're going to be doing things and you know, you're going to hate the fact that you have to work out at a time that you 
you know, that you, you, you don't like to work out or you're going to hate the fact that you're, you're working out at home instead of at the gym because, you know, you have to save that time. You're going to hate all these different things. Make peace with the fact that it's just different now. And then when you do, you actually enjoy the, the whole process. It makes it, you know, a, a lot easier. And I think that's a big part. Here's the other thing, too, um, is that – and this is, this is – I like what you said about honesty, Adam, because here's where I like to use honesty – be very honest with with the value uh, that you that you place on the things that you spend your money on. And so what I mean by that is a lot of us, without realizing it, the average person, the average middle class American spends a lot of money on stupid shit that we really do. If you really looked at your at your things, at the stuff you spent money on, and let's say you went to Starbucks every day. I buy my coffee every morning or you go to Starbucks twice a day. You're probably spending two to three hundred bucks a month. On Starbucks, I'm just using a simple example, but you're, you're probably spending a couple hundred dollars a month on Starbucks. What if instead of spending that money on Starbucks, you hired a gardener to mow your lawn for you, which now, and, and do your yard work, so now you've got a few hours a week open that you can spend more on your fitness or your family or your business. I remember once I, you know, I, I came to this conclusion right, when I was hiring someone to clean my house. It was in, in you know, in the... The way I grew up, no way my mom would ever hire someone to clean the house. I can do it myself. That's silly. Well, I started doing the math. I'm like, wait a minute. The hour I spend, the two or three hours I, uh, I have this person clean my house, if I dedicated it to, to business, I could earn more money than I spend on that housekeeper. It doesn't make any sense. Of course I'm going to do that. Or the time that I spend with my family is way more valuable. So think of it that way too. Maybe you don't buy the expensive stuff or the designer clothes, or maybe you have a car that's not as expensive, but instead you pay for people to help to free up time. Maybe you hire an assistant. We do this here at Mind Pump in our business. We have staff here that literally does things that we could all do, but what, does it, do, what it does for us is it frees up our time so we could spend it on other things. And so that's, I think, a, a, a big part of the honesty is, okay, can I free up time by taking money away from these things that I spend money on and placing it in places that might be more more valuable. Um, and with that, Mind Pump is on YouTube. You can also check us out on YouTube. Go to Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. We're all on Parlor. We're all on Parlor. So you can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, Justin at Mind Pump Justin. And we're also on Instagram under those same names. Come check us out. This was my thought. If I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to keep getting the same thing I've always gotten. Right. Yeah. And I could see no path out of that at that time. So part of it is you, which this is something very common. I think all of us did this, right? Mm -hmm. You you removed yourself from your comfort zone intentionally. In 